comfort videos. We all have them, and they come in many different shapes and sizes. I find the concept really interesting, like what makes this particular clip of a Giraffe stream my comfort video? It's not like a cozy video game or anything like that, but for some reason, I always find myself drawn to it when I need a certain amount of serotonin. It could be that the challenge of trying to draw the Wensler in the Grinch and Donald Duck silhouette upside down is just so huge and insurmountable, like it should be impossible. And every time I watch the clip, no matter how many times, I still am in awe that it actually happens, that Karina always finds a way to draw this unlikely Dr. Seuss pairing. So I'm going to take it upon myself to give back as a thank you to this piece of media, my comfort video. I'm going to give to the Drawfee community and I guess the Dr. Seuss community some more Wensler and Grinch fan art. My name is Nathan and whether you're sneetches on beaches or a cat with a glove on your paw, it's time to jump in to another speed draw. All right, I think I'll begin by just painting the scene. I wanted to draw Grinch and Wensler being very domestic. Obviously, they're in love and boyfriends, and as we know from the image Karina drew, they were out and about at the Raymond <laughs> Preserve, just enjoying a beautiful day before going to Disney World. So I wanted to draw them where they are the rest of the year, which in my headcanon is Whoville. Because let's think about it. If I was taking the next step in my relationship with Grinch and Wunzler, it would be moving in together. So the Grinch lives above Whoville in the frickin' mountains <laughs> in a cave, and the Wunzler lives in the middle of the woods with the truffula trees. So there's gonna need to be some middle ground found, and they're both gonna move to the city together, which I just think is so cute. So basically I've already kind of sketched in a little bit that you can see that kind of swoofing M, like lopsided McDonald's arches are going to become a window and then this is like a table in their living room where the Grinch is currently sewing a thneed which does make sense because in the movies we've seen the Grinch multiple times sewing <laughs> so we know he has the ability to do so and yeah and then I have the Wensler reading a book which is like an instruction manual of sorts that'll come into play later once you see all of the bells and whistles that I have to draw. I'll also go ahead and take this moment to just warn all of you, there's a lot of flashing colors and adjustment layers in this video. As always, if you have photo light sensitivity, you have been warned, proceed with caution. Because I didn't know what colors I wanted for the piece. I kind of went back and forth with it because there's sort of this stereotypical idea of Dr. Seuss, which are these very bright, highly saturated colors. And then there are his actual illustrations, which typically have very, very limited color palettes, are rarely super saturated. Like I think the Lorax has the most saturated colors out of all of his books. Like most of the time, it's only one or two colors and it's very pastel or desaturated. So these colors, you don't get used to them. They are not here to stay. They change a lot because I just wanted to have fun exploring. For me, whenever I do an art piece, there is something so calming and satisfying about just changing the colors in an exploratory way, <laughs> like you just saw in that flash, because it's just soothing. And it also makes me feel like, wow, I have the full range of power as a digital artist to choose what colors I'm going to use in a way that if I was painting, like I wouldn't have that kind of liberties. I just enjoy it. It makes me happy. Uh, don't come for my gig. <laughs> it's, that's my own personal joy. Uh, yeah, now I'm doing the inking. You can see that, oh my gosh, the Wensler is looking so cute. I drew his fedora on the table. Uh, I just think that's so nice. And I have him like reaching out, just like touching the arm of the Grinch, being like, oh Grinch, I'm reading this book and I have something that I wanna, oh my God, listen to this. As he like reads a piece of it out and the Grinch is just like absorbing it. It was also really fun to interpret Karina's version of the Grinch because 
she used the Donald Duck tail to give him this like long, really kind of glorious hair, which the Grinch is not known for. So that was very fun to interpret as this like wild, big, long, very satisfying curly hair that I gave him. Yeah, and then now we're working on this window, the golden arches that I mentioned earlier, and getting this room to find a one door and all of these picture frames at a time before we're eventually going to go out the door, I think. Or are we going to go to the Grinch? Oh, we do go to the Grinch. Yeah, we got to get his hair in. It was very fun, very satisfying to do. I love his expression. He's just tenderly sewing this need and he's completely shirtless um which is so fun i love that the grinch never wears clothes but all the who's do he's just against them morally he's a nudist i mean he's wearing a scarf for modesty uh that way you can't come for him but yeah i just think he's so cute i like his big nose and his like fuzzy widow chest um and yeah i'm just like doing some more adjustments oh, i'm fixing that sleeve a little bit and then adding some more details. There's some kind of like fabrics that were threads inside this little wicker basket thing and a thimble. Yeah, and some needles. And now we're outside the window. These buildings are inspired by Dr. Seuss illustrations, but oh my gosh, his art style is much more difficult to interpret than you would think. Like there's a way to do it cheesy but it's hard to do in a way that's not cheesy and it feels like Dr. Seuss. Like when I think of Dr. Seuss, there's yes, very bright colors in the cat in the hat, but I also think of that one short story with that kid who like is being haunted by a pair of pants. Do you all remember that one? It was so scary and terrifying. It like haunted me, but I also was obsessed with it. Like I thought it was the coolest thing. I kind of, I had this really weird love hate relationship with scary stories as a little kid because they would freak me out, but they were the most memorable. And they, since they had such a big impact on my life, <laughs> because if you read a scary story about something happening in the water, then for the next week, you're too afraid to take a bath. <laughs> so it impacts you and your day-to-day -day life as a little kid. And it's like, wow, that's the power of literature and art. N needless to say, what does that have to do with just putting in some Dr. Seuss houses in the background? I wanted to do it justice to Mr. Seuss. Also, kind of a side note, my last video was about drawing every Drawfee parody Pokemon, and there were so many people in the comments, rightfully so, correcting me about how I haven't kept up with Pokemon and all of the facts that I've gotten wrong. So with this video, there's something so funny. I hope that there's like this secret society of Dr. Seuss super fans that will just emerge from, I don't know, the Dr. Seuss subreddit and come at me in the comments for like getting things wrong about the sneeches on the beaches or something like that. Uh, if that happened, it would make my year. So <laughs> fingers crossed, here's hoping. I should should probably say a bunch of like really confident things about Dr. Seuss that are probably incorrect to provoke them. Anyway, back to the actual illustration. I'm just going to finish up coloring these houses and then get to the roofs and the truffle trees, which I make all pink. I know they're all different colors in the Dr. Seuss book, but I don't know. I th when I think of truffle trees, I think of pink thneeds. So that's what they are. And these aren't the colors that I end up keeping just because I shift everything. Everything's going to become much creepier towards the end. Trust me, we'll get there. But I think I'll take a moment to talk about the big empty space, which is the floor. Uh, yeah, I needed to actually fill their quote unquote house with um, objects and stuff. So luckily the members of my Patreon were like, oh, they they should be opening up a clothing business or a toy store to continue their schemes against Christmas and their pursuits of capitalism. And I just thought that was absolutely charming. So I do that just indeed. I went and I looked at toys that were inside the original cartoon that all of the little Whovians are playing. So they're all in there kind of like as Easter eggs, but that's what the book that the Onesler is reading is about. It's about starting your own toy store. So maybe these toys are wonderful, but then at Christmas day, they all fall apart or spontaneously combust to ruin Christmas. I don't know, they're scheming, or maybe they just wanna make money and they're trying to cash in on Christmas and hoping that you know the commercialization of the holiday will eventually 
deteriorate what it's originally supposed to be about. Um, yeah, either way, I have faith in them. You can see the colors are going absolutely bonanzas in the moment. Uh, yeah, we settle on this more sunsetty orange, you know, kind of a more creepy, almost Halloween vibe. The piece is about Wensler and Grinch. So I'm like, you know what? I don't even care if this green isn't anywhere else in this image. I'm going to make the Grinch a beautiful shade of green and the Wensler a beautiful shade of blue because I want them to look their best. And yeah, this is the finished illustration. That was so quick. The reason why this one was so fast is because it's a little bit of self-care. Um, I guess I'll take a moment just to thank you all for always coming to my channel. If you like what I do and you want to see my channel grow and continue to make more awesome, fun, quirky videos, please like and subscribe. And down below in the comments, tell me, what are your headcanons for Wensler and Grinch? Who squeezes the bottom of the toothpaste and who yells at the other for that not mattering at all? Who's a breakfast person? Who's a more afternoon dinner and tea kind of fellow? Just tell me all of it. Write a whole fan fiction in the comments down below. And yeah, you can also follow me on Patreon if you want to make suggestions like you saw in this video for characters or concepts in the background of the videos. It's just, I think, $2 a month to get in there and $4 to have your name in the end credits. And speaking of end credits, here they are now. Special thanks to Anna Sophia Boyd, Axilius the Great, Bodhi, Blue Uwu, Kay Clark, Christopher, Dabadudu, Dax Quinn, Aaron Martin, Emoe, Gay Jarris, J. Johar, JD Boy 2000, Johan, Kitsune Chibiko, Lucky Paradox, Melon, Mild Moth Man, Native Runner, Orion Amastasia, Pinecone, Potion Cellar Door, Rin, Scorching Ray, Sir Camelot, Smalls the Sax Jammer, Shernanigans, Tad the Turtle, Tarthalinor, The Real Michael, Thumper Daytime, Thony, Tortilla Chips, Tuesdays Anyways, Tundra Katie Bean, and Tuppence Pies. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nathan, and I'll upload a new video real soon. <laughs> Bye!